the Boston Celtics get embarrassed, run off the floor, 230 to 77 or something in that range. <laughs> we break it down next on First to the Floor. Who's going to be first to the floor here? And it was Marcus Smart as he usually is. And drive, scoop, lay up on the ground. That's not the first time we've seen a superstar in green and white like sacrifice the body. Going in, knocked away. Wayne Spoonie here. I'm here with my guy, Jake Eisenberg, who went live last night on our new Celtics late night show. So definitely check that out if you have not. Jake, you've had 24 hours. You got some of your, your thoughts off last night. <laughs> How are you feeling any better today? I honestly, I honestly think I pre-graved and that's not a, it's a, if you're watching Succession, I think I pre-graved the Celtics, I think, without really knowing it. Like, I definitely had hope coming into the game yesterday. But I think, I ha like, I don't know, man. I, it just didn't feel like this team had it when it came down to it in the end. Yeah, um, you, yeah. I, I, I was the same. I felt like it was over after game two. Where, yeah, you guys were a little more positive than me. Like, it, I just, it's like, you don't get one game at home against the eight seed it's it's all over dude like it just is just sad depressing um but you guys rehashed sort of the minutiae of the game last night so yeah. um i want to do like maybe not the big picture but a little bit more big picture stuff and i think we'll the first out. thing the main thing we have to talk about yeah. is joe Missoula. but if you'll indulge me i have a very oh, quick story please so I'm an attorney, right? In my first year out of law school, I was working at a law firm. And if you're a first year associate or a second year, even a third year, you know nothing. You know shit. Law students know less than nothing. And I've probably been there for like 12, 13 months. And one of the partners like, hey, do you want to do this hearing for me? Like you just take it over and go for it. So I'm like, yeah, you don't say no to anything at a law firm, right? So I thought I had prepared well enough. I spent a lot of time but what I didn't know how to do was prepare the right way because I was so green and so new. So when I get to the hearing, I sit down, the other side goes first and in the middle of the, the other side presenting their case in my head, I'm just like, Oh fuck. I'm <laughs> totally unprepared for this. And then when he rested and the judge turned to me, I must've had the look on my face that Joe Missoula had on his face last night, because I overall think Joe has done fine, but push come to shove. The pressure is on. You're at the highest level of basketball. Joe looked like, Oh fuck. I have not prepared enough for this. <laughs> I <Dude>. mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Joe Missoula was right with you on that, on that lawyer's bench. I've, I've come to the point where I honestly just feel bad for Joe at this point. Um, like you can Same. be angry, you can be mad, you can be disappointed, you can be all these things. But the reality is like the plan was not for Joe to be in this spot. Yeah, It was not Brad's plan. It was no one's plan. Um, and he may ruined it, fumbled the bag, fumbled one of the best jobs in the NBA. And, the timing of it could not have been worse. Like the fact that it had was after Will Hardy had already accepted the job to Utah the training camp was like a fortnight away. There was no recourse. Like what are you going to bring in assistant wise? Like maybe that's the, the part that maybe they could have, they could have done a better job of is bolstering the bench around Joe. Um, but honestly, he was like an acceptable regular season coach. Yeah. Like, like, Best net rating, 57 wins. Like a lot of guys got better. Um, the biggest issue last season was turnovers and offense. And like the turnovers were much like if you went into the off season with one big issue, it was like turnovers, assisted turnover ratio and the overall offense came in with the mentality to, yeah, heat gang, look, talk it. <laughs> yeah. Talk it, man. You deserve talk it, bro. It, man. Yeah. <laughs> the heat, the heat, then like credit the heat. Like, hey. <laughs> They're taking it to this, taking it to Joe Missoula. Spolstra is, has him in the torture chamber. Yeah. Um, 
But that being said, like it didn't feel like Joe outcoached Doc. Didn't feel like he outcoached Quinn Snyder. Uh, and then yeah. he faced the mountaintop today. And yeah. He did no not chance. make it to the top of that mountain. No. He was not even close. Yeah, I, I think at least like th- Dro got a lot of heat throughout the season, not from us, but from other yeah. people. I think even up to most of the Sixer series, he had some questionable calls in the Sixer series. I remember you and I on the playback flipping out when they were doubling hard, doubling Harden in game yeah. one. It's like, no, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but most mostly you may not agree with Joe's decisions, but they always were at least defensible to me, like his lack of timeout usage. At least he had a clear vision of why he was doing that stuff. But this series with Spolster on the other side, I like what what is our defense we are trying to accomplish, Jake? Like, what are we trying to do on? De- what are we trying to limit? Are we like are we trying to limit Jimmy Butler? Are we trying to limit their shooters? Are we trying to close down the paint? It seems like I, I don't even know what the foundational principle that we're trying to achieve is. Yeah. Last year, everything in front of you, switch everything, just make them shoot over you. Very clear to me what that plan was. This year, I have no, I have no clue. Yeah, it's it feels like it's just been like the t- crappy version of the Ben don't break Belichick defense in that it was like, we're going to play drop. We're going to, you know, allow dude, guys to get into mid ranges. Um, this Heat team, though, it feels like we can't stop anything. Yeah. Not a single, a single part. And it, yeah, it just feels like we've been searching, searching throughout the Sixers series. Um, and it's on, I think it's on everybody. And I think maybe, it, I think it just go. it goes back to the philosophy and the identity of this team. And I'm guilty of it where I was confident that the Celtics could flip the switch defensively. I thought that we saw it enough throughout the regular season that once they got to the playoffs, they'd flip that switch and they'll be grinding teams into dust. Cause that's what they were able to fall back on in the playoffs last year was yep. the elite defense and the offense came and went. And the idea was that the offense wouldn't come and go this year. The problem was the offense has been nowhere, nowhere to be found in this, in this series. I mean, not to get sidetracked, but like literally no one in this series is playing well. Like no one is turning up on, on like on both ends, which is which outside of Tatum, I feel like in games one and two, maybe Rob, but like defensively. And there's like, you know, Reggie Miller's screaming on the, Screen, but okay, yeah, great, great timing. Like Reggie Miller is screaming on the podcast. They're letting Jimmy go one on one. They're letting Jimmy go one on one, and they double Jimmy, and then he kicks to a shooter who like just knocks it down. Like part of this is the Heat are shooting fifty percent from three. Yes, um, and there's a demoralizing aspect to this where um, for them, I think, to shut down the Heat offense right now when they're shooting like this, you need to be like so so crisp. The doubles have to be perfectly timed. Yep. The closeouts have to be. Excellent. And when you're making it back out to Max Struess half a step late, then that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And yeah. So like, it feels like you you, you can pick your poison. The problem is whatever you're picking, like the, the, the the poison that you're accepting is just killing you. Like, yeah. But but they're almost like not even picking. They're just shooting their self in the the head instead of picking a poison. They're picking both. They're like, like, I'll take half half from this poison, half from this poison, and maybe that'll work. But on on the switch flipping, it seemed like the reason we thought they could flip a switch is because like they were saying it basically Mm. like over and over, like, you know, we're preparing for the playoffs. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And then they'd have these games. Like they'd go against the bucks and they'd absolutely destroy them. And it's like, okay, comforting. They won 56, 57 games, like not half speed, but picking their spots. Right. And then you're like, okay, when the playoffs come around, they're going to turn it up. And then look, I I think the Hawk series was not alarming to me, but going seven against that, weird crappy Sixers yeah. team the alarm bells probably should have been going off but it's game also five like, against the sixes that was, and one and one one was, yeah yeah so uh, like long term we've got some folks in the chat like <laughs> ss austin saying they can't go out like this and bring the exact same team back and we'll get to the team uh but yeah. or coach like clearly 
Joe has lost the fan base. Like there's no yeah, doubt, yeah. even if he has his defenders and I personally, this is not all his fault, even though it kind of sounds like we're saying it, this is not all Joe's fault, but like, even if Brad wants to bring him back, like, how do you do that? Like, I can't even imagine the negative response if we go into the season with Joe as the coach next year. Like, it's going to be bad. Yeah. It's going to be really interesting because I saw Chris Mannix tweeted today um, that, which I had kind of forgotten, I guess, but like Joe Missoula was Brad Stevens' protege. And this was the guy, this was, you know, I feel like Brad maybe saw a lot of Brad and Joe, um, this young guy, a um, lot of potential, um, the different was the difference is Brad Stevens got to come in and coach a team that wasn't supposed to make the playoffs. Yeah, and that's the biggest difference here. And you look at these other coaches around the league. Mark Dagnalt is like, he's got the Brad Stevens hat on right now. He's got the Brad Stevens halo effect, like all oh, this young coach. But the Thunder was supposed to win twenty three and a half games. That was their over under, and like, there's no better spot to be than yep. no expectations. And I feel like the Heat playing like that and the Heat and the Celtics are playing like, have been playing not to lose all year long, I felt like. Um, and Al just, just played yeah. too much. Like he just played yeah. guys too much. He was like that was, for his job when he didn't that's need thing. to. That's yeah. the thing. If like if it's a coach that's not a first year guy, um, you can rest guys. You don't have to go for every single win. Um, but yeah, man, like the, it will be, it, the first thing that Brad has done that I think people have would disagree with. I think every single move that he's made has been like pretty universally accepted. Um, and then the stuff that like even didn't work. Okay. Well, this is actually good. And it's, it's much smaller scale, but like Brad brought in Schroeder yeah. on the MLE clearly didn't work. Traded him at the deadline. This is obviously a bigger scale. Like coach took off the interim tag, which I, you know, we were like, I don't know, but like Joe was like, it made sense. And then you want to instill this belief in the team and the co and the coach and the culture. Uh, so I feel like that's maybe the only example we have, right? Like Brad's been doing this job. For, this is his third season, second season. I don't know. Um, second season. Like yeah. he may was, yeah, which is man time. It feels time like goes. a long time ago. Brad was on the bench. Does it dude? <laughs> the NBA is the NBA is. The NBA will age you. No wonder Brad was like, man, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out of here. And especially like going through those COVID years as well. Like those, those two, three years probably felt like 10. Yeah. We will see. Yeah. I bet if this COVID years didn't happen, because Brad specifically said the bubble was like, I yeah. hate this. So yeah. I, I would not be shocked if COVID didn't happen. We'd still have Brad Stevens behind the bench and oh, that'd be pretty nice right now. But uh, all right, L let's get too depressing questions yes. that i think awesome. i want to chat with you about and then um <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about game four i have titled it in our run sheet game four copium uh so this i have not felt this defeated about a celtics loss in quite some time it's actually the first playoff game i turned off early since Kyrie bucks mm. game five so what what was worse how you feel right now or the Kyrie Bucks game. I I didn't turn it off, but I was not watching. Honestly, the, the I I thought it was I I my analogy was like I wonder if this is what it's like to starve to death. Like the game <laughs> <laughs> Like the, the game Probably. <laughs> yeah, like the game felt like it was over honestly maybe after the first quarter, but like definitely like 3 or 4 or 5 minutes into the third quarter. Oh, yeah. It, right? And Bench got cleared and you're just, you're dead, right? But you, I kept looking over and I'm like, oh, Pritchard's just shot. Cornette just contested a thing. Grant's out there. And I looked back again and they were still playing. Like, and I was like, how is this still happening? How? And this, that's what like starvation is like. You, you, you can kind of live like a month without food. But it's like, just end me, please, Lord. Um, <laughs> Peyton so was Pritchard was our water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, dude. Food, yeah. I too, oh, man. So... I, I don't think it was as bad as the Kyrie Bucks one. Kyrie was worse because I felt like it was all his fault. It felt like the whole year was his fault. It felt like all year, yeah. like, I think maybe you could make an argument this team didn't quite meet their regular season expectations because I feel like they left maybe like five wins on the table, which, you know, every team's going to do. But um, 
you know, the Wizards game, the Rockets game, the several blown leads. Um, but obviously 57 wins is still like much better than that Celtics team did with the Curry, where they were the favorites in the East coming in. And they don't even think they did. They crack 50 wins. I think they got 48 wins off the yeah, top of my was, head. Yeah. It was something yeah, like that. Which I is like, they hit 50, which is that's in bad. Like that's really bad considering how talented that team was. Um, so th- going into that buck series, they were not favored. Um, that's why I think makes this one more painful as well, right? Is like whether or not it was justified, the Celtics were heavy favorites. Everybody thought the Celtics were going to win except for like heat people and the odd person here and there. So this hurts more because like you have these expectations and this like belief. We've, we got through game seven. We got the 51 point Jason Tatum game. We're coming in. It's all setting up. We beat this heat team last year. We can do it again. So, like, I think this hurts more, maybe, but, like, I think I just answered it both ways. Um, but, like. <laughs> no, this, I think this you one know what hurts I mean? more. Like, it hurts was, more, but, like, it's different. That team had destroyed my will to watch basketball, the yeah, Kyrie right. team, way before the playoffs started. Yeah. Like, I remember texting my buddies in March, like, I can't watch Kyrie Irving anymore. Like, I hate this dude. So, as I cough. Bless you. There we go. Yeah, good stuff. Um, <laughs> that's why talking about Kyrie, it gets me choked up. I get so angry. Um, so by the time they lost in the playoffs, I was like, yeah, kind of saw this coming. But um, all right. You guys touched on Jalen Brown. Oh, boy. We've talked. It's been a theme. We've talked about Jalen. And is this I mean, I, I think this might be the <laughs> worst string of three games I've ever seen him play, especially in the playoffs. Um, yeah, Ben says that yeah. <laughs> Ben Vallis, uh, an unknown uh, watcher of this podcast, <laughs> just a random fan says this team is more organic. This is going on a super disciplined diet and still getting fat somehow. Yeah. It's like the caveman diet from back in the day <laughs> or something, you know, it's like, I'm eating all this red meat. How am I not losing weight? Um, so yeah, this one hurts more, but uh, uh, Jalen's been absolutely atrocious. Like, there's no point oh, in sugarcoating boy. it. He has Dude. been awful, awful, awful on both ends too. Like, he's clearly let his inability to score consistently affect every single part of his game, and now he's forcing it too. Like, oh, now man. he's not even looking for the right play. He's just like, I got to get to the rim. I got to get shots. I got to score because we need me to do that, which is true. But that's just not how you get back into a rhythm. So. Big picture. He was pretty bad last year against the Heat, at least from a turnover perspective, right? Like at times he looked awful. He was pretty bad against Golden State. And now if you want to pin blame on one player, which I don't think is fair, I mean, Jalen shares the largest percentage of blame amongst the players. I'll say it that way. So is your opinion changing at all on Jalen or like his future on the Celtics? Man, this is it is really hard in the wake of this, right? Like I know. to not overreact. I think this Heat team is just the worst possible thing matchup for yeah. Jalen. Like a team that's able to get into him like this, and it's it's almost surprising that more teams aren't able to do it. I guess when you see the Heat do it, what feels like so easily to disrupt him and to like make him look like a completely ineffective, to make him look completely lost. I think it comes back to coaching a little bit and that we we tried to turn some of the initiating keys over to Jalen this year. I'd say the most we've tried to turn over to him in Jalen's career. Um, and I, I would, I'm hesitant to say that Jalen can't do something because he's done so much and proven so many people wrong and taken so many steps to get better every single year. So for me to say that I don't think that he... Like it might be time to give up the fact that like he can become a 1.5 to assist to one to one turnover guy as opposed to a one to one. Like we had that like three week stretch when he put the mask on where we were like, Yeah, is this the moment? Uh narrator, it was not in fact the moment <laughs> where it, it actually it was the moment. We just didn't know there'd be no moments after it. Yeah. <laughs> And real quick on coaching yeah. with Jalen against the Heat, 
Yeah. I actually had a glimmer of hope in the first quarter. Joe got Jalen three yeah. straight post ups to open okay. the game, and he hit three straight turnaround jumpers over Gabe Vincent. It's like that is how you use Jalen Brown against the Miami Heat. You get him in empty side isos or empty side post ups, and you just let him go to work on a guy who's four inches shorter than him. And then we just never did it again. <laughs> yeah, I, I really think that you need to put Jalen in spots to make him succeed. I think that he it's it's clear like he can be an elite flamethrower. Absolutely one of the best scorers in the NBA. But you have to put him in the position to succeed. Those post ups coming off pin downs. Um you know the I think we've talked about it before and Clay Thompson is kind of like this comparison where they're obviously different players where Clay is like this just catch and shoot wizard coming off screens, etc. But like um he doesn't really dribble the like he he still does he he gets in the post he'll do the odd you know ISO here and there but I think you know Jalen he's not going to be a guy you throw the ball to go make a play for us because once you get to the playoffs and teams are game planning and some of the best defenses the deeper you get into the playoffs yep. the smarter the teams are the more time there is to game plan the more film yada yada yada. and we've seen it two years in a row where Jalen's biggest weaknesses have been brought to the forefront where. You know, it just completely stalls the offense. So I think you, here's what you do. You give Jalen Brown $290 million and you say, here's your $290 million. You are not an initiator. You are not a lead ball handler. You are one of the league's best scorers in the NBA. We're going to put you in positions to come off ball screens, to get into post ups, to, you know, where it's just two dribbles and he's at the rim, two dribbles and it's pull up. And obviously you can still have your ISOs here and there, but like to to try and turn him into what Jason Tatum is and is becoming is just not realistic and it's at the detriment to the team. So you say, hey, here's here's a, here's three hundred million dollars. You're gonna you're gonna score and you're gonna rebound and you're gonna defend. Yeah. It's like, where's the other stuff? That's why, like, you know, I don't like to get on Tatum when he has a bad shooting night. He always does everything else. Where's the rebounding for Jalen Brown? Rebounding? Like, how is he not an incredible rebounder? Like, you look at Tatum as fighting everybody. He's tipping balls and stuff. Like, that is just effort. And Jalen, like, I don't know how many times somebody just walks right by him for an offensive rebound because he refuses to box somebody out. Like, do the little stuff, and then the big stuff will come. You'll find it again if you're playing hard. Uh, but clean music lover, they need to run more sets. Here's the problem, at least in the context of Jalen against the Heat and the Warriors, is the Celtics offense, there's like an initial set. But once you make a play and you get somebody the ball, it's all read and react. They're trying to do like the Warriors stuff. So Jalen will get it out of a pin down, but then he doesn't read the defense quick enough. And like you said, Jake, it just grinds to a halt. And then it's like, okay, well, I guess kick it to Tatum and run a high pick and roll now because we've got seven, 10 seconds on the shot clock. So like maybe that's a function of Joe needs to be more hands on with the offense and yeah, for Jalen's sake, I think that's true. I'm not sure if it's the best thing for the team, though. Yeah. Well, okay. This is this is an interesting point, right? Like, I think Brad's been all about the Spurs, beautiful game, yeah. right? And Joe's kind of it's read and react, drive and kick. Um, but maybe this isn't this team isn't built for that. Like, maybe yeah. maybe it needs to be a bit more constructed. It needs to be more solid. It needs to be more plays. It needs to be because. And it's Jalen is particularly the number one guy. Brogdon, I think, is right there with him. Yes, definitely. Right there with him. And those two guys, like, they're not exactly read or react guys. It's it's just go, try and score. And if it doesn't work, then they pivot, pivot, and throw the ball to someone with eight seconds left on the shot clock. Brogdon does it as well. Um, so I think maybe that that's, you know, it's not just like, can we get Jalen into better spots? But maybe the offense needs to have, like, and this is the thing with the, and I hate to go back to like coaching again, but like the Heat have so many different things I feel like they can go to where they have their handoff game with Bam. That's like a pillar of their offense. Yes. And they have Duncan Robinson coming coming off stuff. They have pick and roll with Bam, not just with Jimmy. It's like Kyle Lowry rolling pick and roll with Bam. Like yeah, Duncan, Robin <laughs> Duncan Robinson ran pick and roll with Bam and threw one of the most nasty – alley oops we've seen in the whole playoffs and then you've got the jimmy butler back down iso iso game whereas the celtics it feels like if the drive and kick game's not working like what is it 
like where what what are the like they feel like the Miami has like three pillars to their offense. Um, and they can they can if if one doesn't work, then they try the other one, then the other one, then the other one. And they keep trying and they keep moving. Whereas if the first thing doesn't work for the Celtics, it's just like, and especially in the playoffs, especially against this Heat team, it feels like once that first once once the driving kick games cut off and Miami has just completely cut the water off on that right yep. and and then and then then it's like chicken in the egg and the Celtics not making threes which means you can't do driving kick because then like no one's respecting any of the shooters so feeling prophecy but to get back to Jalen i just think that like you, he's not going he's not a guy where like he's 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 second team all nba guy but i think you know Realistically, he's a top 20-ish, top 25, you know, surefire all-star guy. But you have to, yeah, it's the decision-making. He can dribble the ball. It's just like how many times yesterday did he, is he like sprinting before the ball's even in his hands? Like in game one where Marcus throws him this cross-court pass and Jalen just like drops the ball. He's like clearly in his head. Yeah. Um, and Traveled. So, you know, like traveling and like Tatum was shook in game one. He traveled twice down the stretch and yeah, JB's had a couple. So yeah, it, it's been brutal to watch, but I want a one word. Yes or no, Jake. <laughs> Has this changed <laughs> your opinion of Jalen Brown? Even a little bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you, dude. I think like you just can't watch this and not think like, Something need maybe it's not Jalen Brown that needs to change, but the way we're trying to use him just is not going to be effective. But on that extremely depressing note, what well, a lead in. Oh, go ahead. Do you got something I was, to say? Jake? I was just gonna say, like, if you do zoom back just a little bit, like he still made second team all NBA. He is sure. still one of these most incredible players. And like in general, the Celtics. We're in the final four again, and no one wants to hear it, obviously, because it's really sad. But like being one of the best four teams in the NBA year in, year out is not the worst place to be when your two best players are 25 and 26. Um, could be worse. Could definitely be worse. <laughs> I'll say that. A bit of optimism right there is, yeah, Jalen's awesome. That's kind of what makes it more frustrating when he falters like this badly, because this is like a – this is another level of bad performance compared like last year. It was more just turnovers. Like he was yeah. still making shots. He was still killing it in semi transition, but this year it's like just all falling apart. But anyway, all right. So before we move on to talk a little bit of copium about game four, we've got a message from our sponsor fan duel. That's right. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, I, you know, get in now I'm going to bet on Celtics and seven. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> uh, get in now. All the odds are good. So I love the great promotions every day. It's safe and secure. You get paid instantly on FanDuel. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 plus in select states. First online real money wager. Only $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com backslash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com backslash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-800-188-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org backslash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Gambling help line ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24 7 support in massachusetts visit mdgamblinghelp.com in maryland 1-877-8 hope and y or text hope and y to 467369 in new york or 1-800-522-4700 in wyoming or visit 1800gambler.net in my home state of west virginia jake game four do you have any bets for us <laughs> look I know things are I know things are tough right now, but if you believe, if you're one of these people who believes 
in the future of the Celtics that they still have a little bit left in them. Celtics money line and Jalen Brown to score 30 plus. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> plus 508 on FanDuel Ooh. right about now. Look, who knows, man? Who knows? There's a reason that's plus 508. Would be my would be my, my warning <laughs> shot on that yeah, one. Yeah. There's a reason 10 bucks gets you 50. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so Vandell Harris says, my question to you two is our season over. So we're going to talk game four a little bit. Um, and I do, I, I, I'm insane. This is stupid. I'm a sick. I'm a sicko as well. I've I don't already, think we lose yeah. game four. So <laughs> I, I just don't like. We can't get swept, <laughs> right? Um, so if we win game four, Jake, what's it look like on the offensive end and the defensive end? On the offensive end, sure. At some point, we have to hit shots, right? Right. Yeah. At some point, the the, pro- the problem is, I feel like shots are so tied to emotion and so tied to confidence and there could not be a bigger chasm between the level of comfort and confidence that the Miami Heat are playing with and the Boston Celtics are playing with right now. And so like, but maybe there's going to be an element to like, you know, seasons over, whatever, like we may as well let it fly. Just go hoop. Um, Yeah. I I would like to say that maybe the Heat um, let their foot off the gas. Don't maybe step on the throat, but it does not really feel like something the Miami Heat do, but teams up 3-0. You know, maybe they get a little complacent, and then I'm such a sicko that like they win, they win game, game four, five. and yeah. I'm like, hey man, maybe the Celtics win game five, and then, and then, and then it's a game six. Yeah, it's one game at a time, it's and then going back time, to Boston man. for seven, and baby. Then, hey, any team could come back from three out. It's After this, this friggin' right. group of yeah. goofballs who are yeah. like, we need our backs against the wall. <laughs> no, don't do that to us. Stop it. I was thinking going into game three, like, oh, backs against the wall. This is the Celtics team we're going to get. But then I was like, well, this is the team that now has relied upon their backs being against the wall this many times. And now they're going to, they're at a point where they're just like relying on that idea. Yeah. More so than like good. <laughs> actually being desperate. It's like, oh, it just happens now. We yeah. always play well with yeah. our back against the wall. So all the shots are just going to go in and life's going to be good. Versus like, no, 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 no. You got to like, dig down, grind this stuff out and actually go out and get a win on the road, which was not there yesterday. Um, but maybe it's there tomorrow. I don't know. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not? They got to well, win one. Yeah. Finally, finally, the Celtics are not favored. Like literally for the second time, the entire playoff run. Got the heat right where we want them, baby. <laughs> uh, defensively, I would like to see, um, and I don't, I don't want to say it's a lack of effort because I think partially like we, what we were talking about is like, there's doesn't seem to be a coherent plan. So like, it's hard to play hard when you don't know where you're supposed to be or who you're supposed to switch on to. So I would like to see us simplify things, just switch everything, just do it. Just see what happens. Well, well what about and then double what about Jimmy? Paul, I was say, what about poor Derek White? Because I know, I know. like, that poor Whatever. guy, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like he's just getting, but like, at least commit to a plan, um, right? And and maybe the, the secondary part of the plan is Jimmy double, you know, isoing in certain spots on certain dribbles. Like why? Like obviously Jimmy's a infinitely better playmaker than Joel Embiid, um, but they're also way better at doubling Joel Embiid and, and getting out to shooters and. That's probably an execution thing on the side of Miami versus, um, and this again, clean music lover goes back to like this, the season, like where are the junk defenses? Where are the things to turn to? Why the Celtics would be great at zone. They'd be so good, dude. That's what like, but the problem is Miami run zone every, like, yeah, this is why they're so difficult to play offense against because Ben said it on your guys pod last night. You watch Every possession, they're in a different zone or they're in a box and one or they're playing man with drop or they're playing man with switching everything like you just don't know. And we've we've sort of like confuse ourselves on defense, but we ain't confusing the (laughs) offense. You know what I mean? Like, why do you not implement a zone at some points in the season? Like you're going to need that sometimes. So it just like it's. And Ime didn't do it either, but he had these no. guys so locked in on this yeah. everything that, and he had a different Al Horford. I think that's part of it too. Yeah. Well, I, 
I just think that this the, when you're on the Al Horford thing that this is a bad matchup for Al. Like I think we yeah. saw this last season as well, right? Like Bam had some really big games against the Celtics last playoffs too. It was like when Rob was there, and we didn't even talk about this, but like I we I would start Rob. Yes, definitely got to. Like, and I think not even for tomorrow, but for the following season, it's like at some point we're gonna have to turn the keys over to Rob as a starter and Al's going to be the bench guy. Um, let's see what Rob can do. And I know he got the two fouls yesterday and that kind of impacted how much he was like able to play. But like, how do we know? Like, I thought that he he was so much more effective in, in the previous game that like, and then by the time he came in, the heat were already hot. It was, was already comfortable. It was over. Um, yeah. And, uh, like run a hundred Rob Tatum pick and rolls until they can prove they can stop it. But yeah, those two fouls on Rob were so Tony brothers, dude. They're yeah. just like, get out of here. Tony brothers. Like we're already losing this series. Come on, like, come on bro. <laughs> yeah, we, we, one time we needed Scott Foster yesterday. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. The extender <laughs> baby. Uh, so do you, do, I kind of feel like maybe the answer to this is yes. And they definitely gave up in game three, but have they given up? Okay, so I mean, like, I guess they they technically gave up in Game Three. Um, that you second see, half of the yeah. third quarter was bad, dude. Did you see you, the video going around of Wick and Joe on the sideline? No. Um, okay, Bill and Russillo mentioned it on the, their pod last night, and I saw it on Twitter today. It's like they're getting blown out at some point, which is that's going to have to be more specific because that was several points in the game yesterday, <laughs> but. Joe walks past Wick and he like turns back to Wick and says like, kind of like says something to him. Like I am, or like I got it or something. And then Wick like is like sinking in his chair and like gives like a little like finger, like finger twirl, like get him out of there or wrap this up or something. And that's uh, he, honestly something gone. I can't, something I can't remember ever seeing like on any team, let alone the Celtics. Like that would never happen to Brad. That would never that well, it just wouldn't, and like I think that speaks to like where Joe. And again, it's just not Joe's fault, dude. Like he like he he probably has been treated kind of as as an intern type figure for like guys like Wick and stuff, just because like he is. Um, so I think that everybody felt it. Um, Joe kept those guys out there maybe too long, but like third quarter starts, and I know you were like me, Marcus Smart offensive rebound yep. and one. Comes back down the other end. I had like the play-by-play up here earlier. Um, I think we doubled Jimmy and got a stop or a turnover or something. Yeah, we well, it was like, yeah, Smart got a free throw. Then Vincent kind of cooked D White on a. Oh, that's right. Yeah, on the thing. <laughs> yeah, and then and then Horford Horford misses. Butler hits a fadeaway on and one on D White again. Um, Brown gets a layup, but then like it comes back down the other end, and Reggie Miller and Stan Van Gundy are like screaming like. Jimmy Butler's going off again. He just gets the N1. You have to help on Jimmy. They help. Kicks to Strews, three. Lead goes to 18. And it's just like, I get that they gave up, but it, nothing that they were doing was working. I don't really blame them, but yeah. they did give up. Um, one thing that I always loved about Brad is if the starters weren't bringing it, he would go to those dudes who have not yeah. played in like two weeks and they're just like, no, nope, I'm going to full bench lineup. You guys just play super hard and teach the starters a lesson. And Joe like never did that no. this season, probably because he didn't feel comfortable, you know, which like, yeah. I know I, I do. I truly feel bad for Joe. I yeah, really do. I'm a, w, I'm, I'm a WVU grad, man. Like I live in Morgantown still. Yeah. I really want him to be successful, but Windows close fast, and you just cannot wait for him. I think he will be a great NBA coach someday. I well, just if, not now. Yeah. If he gets fired, right? Like someone else will pick him up as an assistant, obviously, right? Yeah. I hope. Like, do you think he'd take a demotion? Can t- it'd be weird? I, I, I think. Weird. I think Joe would personally, um, yeah. from everything that I've seemed to that he's spoken about, like humility wise and all that kind of stuff, feels like he would be open to it. But like. Does that work in the locker room? Right, exactly. Where there's like this nice try, buddy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <kinda> one guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Is is it is it true that Jimmy Butler was the guy because he played for Marquette that like beat Joe in his last 
game. I saw that going around Twitter today, like in college that Jimmy Butler was like, because they're the same age. Jimmy's like almost 34. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't actually, I don't know. I was not at WVU yet when Joe was here. So I remember their final four team that he was on, but I don't know what happened in his senior season, to be honest with you, but probably I saw a video, a picture of just like Jimmy Butler screaming, like, and Joe was all in the background being sad. I was oh, like, man. Oh, <laughs> that's what, what is this world, dude? This, Brutal. It's, it's Jimmy Absolutely. Butler's world, man. We're just living in it. Absolutely. He's the main character, man. Yeah. Um. All right, Jake, let's have some fun. Yeah. Let's have Finally. a little fun here. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> Let's not take this too seriously. This is for fun. Listening and in the chat. But look, if you're one of those people who believe the Celtics need a big shakeup, that's not just the coach. I think there's two guys that have real tangible value and would be a big shakeup. You, you can't trade Tatum. Like he's, you're not going to upgrade on Tatum. Yeah. He's completely off the table. Those two guys are Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart. Ooh. I have I have, I have only have two Marcus Smart trades. You're absolutely going to despise them. But well, what, I, well, I have a question. Like just before, on the Marcus Smart piece, I feel like if you're going to make a trade with Marcus, I feel like you, you could make the same trade with Derek or Malcolm, right? So it's like of those three guys, that's the question to me. It's like who, which one of those three are you trading? Yeah. You think and it's Marcus? I, I he, So... <laughs> I don't think so, trading Derek or Malcolm's a big shakeup. It doesn't right. fundamentally change who this team is. Right. And if we're saying, I'm not saying we feel this way. I'm just saying like, if you're one of those people who are like, something is rotten with this team's core, like yeah. the same issues have happened for three straight coaches. Now the collapsing in the clutch, the not bringing it every game, like, Marcus has openly embraced, like, I am their mindset. I'm the heart of this yeah. team. So I think you can make the argument that, like, in order to shake up and change those bad habits, Marcus is the guy that's got to go, not Derek or Malcolm. So that's why yeah. I chose Marcus, because then it's a true shake up. Like, Malcolm, it's like, okay, whatever, fun season, see you, buddy. And <laughs> Derek, I don't know how, <laughs> Derek's got value, but, man, these playoffs are not helping it. Although he's the only one who make a shot, so maybe. Yeah, dude, he's actually still. Him. That's what's crazy, dude. Is yeah. he shooting fifty percent from three? Yeah, but I mean, he's just <sighs> doing literally nothing else. So. I know. Anyway, all right. So you hinted that you had some Jalen Brown trades on the stream last night, one of which <laughs> was an Atlanta trade. Do you have yeah. those with you? Juan? I have it. I have it. Okay. Is the Do Atlanta want, yeah. trade for Trey Young? No. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. Like, you no. need a ball handler. There you go. Uh, okay. <laughs> But the, 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 okay, and this is a question too. It's like if you're gonna rank the Celtics' issues, where does it start? And it's like, is the crunch time issues at the top of that? Because you look at game five against Atlanta where they blow that lead. You look at game one against Philly where they're up four with like two minutes to go. Game four against Philly, they're up five with two minutes to go. Game two against Miami, they're up ten with like six minutes to go. A lot of that feels like it could be fixed with like a legit ball handle. Like you watch yes. Jamal Murray, right? And That's why like, I was thinking Trey Young. I know, but I just I can't, I can't get there with Trey Young. I know. Um, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll pull it up here. So uh, it feels dirty, man. I gotta be honest. Do it. Uh, yeah. So Jalen Brown out to Atlanta for DeAndre Hunter, Onyeka Okongu, AJ Griffin. And three first round picks. I don't know what the value is um, because of Jalen's expiring contract. I think it would have to be like the wink wink deal, right? Like if a team's going to be giving up this stuff. Um, oh, yeah. But that, right? those always happen, dude. Like when yeah. Denver traded for Aaron Gordon, it was like, don't yeah. worry, you know, we'll take care yeah. of you. So, yeah. Okay. I'll pull it up again. Like, what do you. <laughs> I don't love this one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing. I I love a uh, sorry, but I love a yeah, Kongu. Yeah. I don't like AJ Griffin. Whatever he can't defend, but at least he can shoot and he's big, so that's fine. But I am just not a hunter guy. I'm sorry, Fair. and he's old. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, look, yeah, Hunter, whatever. Like honestly, if Bogdanovich was on a contract that wasn't expiring, I would like prefer Bogdanovich. Yeah, like yeah. he's just buckets in the clutch. Like, and I feel like a guy that could really help those issues. I I almost think if you swap out, 
like because you could do the same thing with boat first of all you might get some extra picks in there if you swap hunter for bogey and yeah. um you could do he's, the he's same way with- oh oh he's a ufa yeah. this off season. okay yeah my bad. yeah Damn. and we can't sign I know, yeah. so that's out damn yeah. okay never mind so like all right the atlanta thing is like or there's 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 a potential to jante murray piece to that but the problem with that is is that he's got one year left on his deal uh and i don't really feel like playing the the Kyrie game with DeJounte Murray. Yeah, I'm not a huge DeJounte Murray guy, to be totally honest with you. So and we're and then now we have Marcus, Derek, DeJounte, and Malcolm. Yeah, yeah. And so obviously you're gonna move stuff around to make that work, but um But you have so much ammo yeah. if you get three first round picks and still have one of Marcus, um yeah. D White and Malcolm to trade. So yeah. The right. the the one that's like the most popular um deal is has been the um, Portland stuff. I know we talked about it last night. Um, do, how do you like, where would you, cause there's two directions, right? It's either the, it's either the Dame direction, which would be like, I, I think you can make it work whether or not it's grant sign and trade or not. Sure. Um, or it's a direction where it's like Simon's number three for Jalen or shade and sharp and Shaden like or that. whatever. Yeah. It's um, like, that's the deal, which is, I, if there's a way to like squeeze Jeremy Grant out of them too, he's a which, free agent now as well. Oh dang, man! Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, then yeah, that that to me, like, I just don't think the Dame thing is realistic because Portland has like made every move they make is like to please Dame. So I just really don't think they're gonna trade him. It would be um, so dumb of them to trade three Simons. Like even if it's just three and Simons for Jalen, honestly, yeah. it would be dumb. Like, what is that team? I don't know. I don't like, it's know. Like, it's, <laughs> like, it's like it's like they might not make. They might be a six seed. Yeah, yeah. And I, not, I, yeah, I like Simons as like sort of a fit for what we need, like a dynamic creator that can kind of move Tatum into off ball or have Tatum be the the setting the screen for him. But he does not like. He is bad defensively. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Like yeah. Trey Young bad. But if we're going to do that, then I would much rather go Dame. It's like, I know, you know who's just amazing in the clutch is Dame. Yeah. And like, you're going to run into some defensive issues for sure with Dame out there. But like, a Tatum, a Tatum, Dame pick and roll, a, T- a Dame Rob, that could feed, that could feed Celtics fans for, for years. Who knows? Uh, I, I, I don't know if I see it. I, but like, yeah, I just don't know why Portland would trade Dame to get Jalen. Like, what the whole point for them would be to pair Jalen with Dame. But like, if we could get Dame straight up for Jalen, I would have a very, very or close to straight up. I would have yeah. a very long think about that because that would be he he would be really good in green. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. This is it doesn't help anyone to have this conversation. But like, we were all pretty anti the Kevin Durant trade. Yeah. Same idea. I'm just saying, like, if you could go back to the beginning of uh, the season and I said to you it was Jalen, Derek, and a first for KD, knowing what you know now, yeah, would you would you do it? Would you have done it? KD just flamed out in the second round himself, you yeah. know? I'd, and he, he got hurt immediately. Like, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like KD is so risky from an injury perspective that I oh, – man, but – I doubt we'd be down 0-3 to the Heat, but I, I still don't think I'd do it. Would you? I th- no. I think I honestly think the best chance of this team winning a title has always been Jalen and Jason like smack bang in their primes, and like yeah. this has always been the struggle. Is it like in the bubble we needed this year's version of Tatum? Like if this yeah. year's version of Tatum is in the bubble, they probably make the finals. Uh, we probably make the we probably win the finals last year if we have twenty nine year old ver- version of Jason Tatum. It's just like he's so good for a twenty five year old, but he, he he's just he not, he's building not Jokic. <laughs> he's building exactly right. But yeah. even Jokic when he was twenty five, no, like yeah, old, no, I'm with you, yeah, yeah. Like how old was Jokic when? What was Jokic doing when he was twenty five? Like is, how old is he now? He I is twenty seven, twenty six, twenty eight, right? Twenty eight, yeah. And so it's like, okay, when when Jokic was in his twenty fifth season, they um they it was the they they lost in the first round with that terrible team and the year prior they lost in the conference finals or it was the first round, right? So it's like 
he was a completely different player three years later. He was out of shape. He, he had not even won an MVP yet when he was Tatum's age. And now he's Javon Carter. He's not he solving any Javon. He's a I mean, WVU I, grad, baby. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. Go get Javon. <laughs> no, he'd be a nice little like replacement sure. if Pritchard gets traded. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But like that, I don't think that's how this issue. series. Yeah. 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 And so that's I think the question that Brad has to try and figure out is that how do we well, I don't know. What what do you think the team's number one issue is? Like if I think that it's this this clutch time stuff or like when we have a 12 point lead with six minutes to go, why do we lose some of these games? Like that is probably because if you win game five, if you win game one and game four against Philly, like it, you feel different. Well, and like we had a lead in game one of this series and like game two, we had a lead. Did we not? I mean, and then just like completely fell apart. So um, I'm with you that I think like a consistent, way to score when Tatum is like doubled and tripled is the way to solve it. Um, and that's supposed to be Jalen. I'm with, I wouldn't actually trade Jalen Brown. I'm fine with super maxing them and going forward with these two, but my biggest concern is replacing Al Horford. Like I really, we need to replace Al. Like he was super important to this team. And I think a big issue with how we've been playing is because Al has not been good. He looks 36 because he's a 36-year-old man trying to play like 30-plus minutes a night against Bam Adebayo. So, like, we got to replace Al. But but I will say, well, what about the the Sixers series? He was awesome Awesome. against MB. I know. Yeah, but, like, defense. I'm not saying get rid of Al, but, like, in two years, Al is not going to be a rotation player. Oh my, you know? Nas Raid would be awesome. Uh, I got um, I got a mini trade here. I okay, don't, here we go. I, yeah, yeah. But um, look, I think next year is, and look, you want silver linings for this for this season, this series? Oh my, touching on wood. Rob is healthy. Yeah. Currently healthy, going into an off season um, where he can really work on his body. Uh, and I think that that's the succession plan right now is Rob. Like Rob has the talent, has the potential to absolutely no question be a starting center on a championship team. Definitely. In my opinion. The question is, can he hold up? Um, and I don't think we need him to be 32, 34 minutes, but like, can he play 28 minutes a night and you don't have to worry about him missing 30 games? Yeah. Get him in the underwater workouts. Yeah. Like that's on, like, honestly, you know, knees over toes program. That was what fixed my knees. Him having and like it's it's gonna be on Rob and I feel like I I don't feel like we that we know that Rob is like this crazy work ethic dude that's like gonna work on his body like that needs to be like we need to hear Rob's got the nutritionist we need the, we need all the stories of like Rob really committing to like a massive massive off season and because like the to Tatum Rob pick and roll he has no idea how to play offense. And he's just like throwing this stuff at the rim, but he has this insane touch. It's that so all crazy, of them go dude. in, dude. Yeah. He's he's absurd. Like he is the like he could be the 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 piece. I just don't feel confident. Like Tatum, I know for a fact will reach his ceiling. Yes, I have absolutely no doubt that every year he's going to come in, working on his game, getting better, getting healthier, getting stronger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't feel that way about Rob. I need to feel that way about Rob. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe finally having a healthy off season, he'll have a chance to really work on skills instead of just getting right. So that's the hope work on your handle, buddy. Look at what Bam's doing, Rob. Honestly, you can do that. You can do all that. Yeah. Yeah. He reads the game. Um, All right. So I got a couple, we're we're approaching an hour already. So I'm just, uh, unless you got a spicy Jalen one, um, um, you want to throw up quick? this, 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 This might make you throw up. Okay, um, please. All right, good. Jalen Brown. I don't hate it. DeMar <laughs> DeRozan, Alex Caruso, and two first round picks. And then obviously you have to you have to trade one of Derek Marcus and Brogdon after this as well. But Caruso, honestly, this is more of a Caruso trade than a DeMar DeRozan I love trade Caruso. for me. Yeah. Caruso is unbelievable. And then DeRozan, I think, is a guy that you feel comfortable with in crunch time as well. Um yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Jordan, what's up? Dude? Jordan B. Um, yeah. OG. 
Yeah, um, it's been a tough series. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I love DeMar. I think he's probably got at least one or two more elite seasons left in him and Caruso rocks and then two more picks to go get somebody else to add to the core, find an owl replacement. I, I don't hate it. Um, my Bulls, your, yeah. my Bulls friend who I sent that to said, deal if you take out one of the first round picks. I was like, okay. All right, make it two seconds. Yeah, I think a second. <laughs> that's right. He said, make make the, the second first a second, and we're we're in. I'm like, yeah, all right, okay. I said it's a Brad. All right, I got a couple Marcus Smart trades we can kind of breeze through here because oh, not gosh. none of these are super like good. They're pretty terrible, Jay. Well, this Much is the point as yours. well, right? Is that yeah. like everyone can talk about trading everyone whoever you want. You come up with a trade that makes sense and actually makes us yeah. better. And the other team wants to do it too, yeah. which is very hard as well. So like, okay. Detroit, they stink. I'm thinking, getting a pick back here. Oh, wrong one. But <laughs> so, oh, never mind. I didn't bring. I didn't. I didn't get the Detroit trade. This is my mini trade. Okay. So Al Horford, Marcus Smart, Sam Hauser, veteran ball handler <laughs> who can operate in the clutch, Mike Conley, and Jaden McDaniel's who replaces the kind of the wing depth and the stopper role that Smart's going to vacate. So like kind of a short-term trade but also al's a huge piece he's in this trade like you're just kind of swapping that time for mike conley you're just changing positions on the old guy and i love Jaden mcdaniels i think he's awesome oh. so um i know i th maybe this is just kind of shuffling the deck chairs a little bit but conley and mcdaniels for smart and horford and hauser i threw in there too to make salaries work and because i think they'd like they need shooting really bad so no I think Hauser has real value yeah. uh, and cannot believe that he hasn't been playing throughout the playoffs and especially to start this series. I just think a, a Minnesota probably says no to that. I think Jaden McDaniels is maybe their second most important player on that roster at this point. Um, and then they bring in Al Horford. So now they've got Horford, Cat, and Gobert. Maybe they're, maybe that they're doing a Carl Anthony Towns trade. Well, they're doing it for smart. The trade is right. for smart and Horford can kind of play. He re If they lose Nas Reed in free agency, Horford can kind of replace what Nas Reed did. He can play with either of those guys, at least for a year. Um, and then smart takes over for Conley as their long-term solution at point guard. He's a distributor, doesn't need the ball and he replaces McDaniel's wing stopper role on defense. Uh, yeah. Dude, look, honestly, I, I, I would do it because of what I think about Jalen McDaniels, um, Jaden McDaniels, he's incredible. Yes. If you have a lineup with Rob Tatum and Jaden McDaniels out there, uh, and Jalen yeah. when he well, tries, cool. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, All right, this uh, is a yeah. this is a really shitty one. All right, this one's terrible. <laughs> I don't even know why I put it through or why I'm bringing it up, but whatever. It's been a long series. Washington, Marcus Smart for Daniel oh, Gafford Jesus. and Monty Morris. What like, are you doing, Sweeney? And I forgot to throw a pick in here, but we'd be getting a pick as well. Um, Monty Morris, solid, decent point oh, guard, boy. ball handler. Daniel oh, Gafford, boy. you know, Rob Insurance, solid starting big. You get a pick to add to the, uh, you know, to the war chest to trade, you know, Al in picks for his replacement or, or Grant if it's a <laughs> sign and trade, you know, I don't know. This is a bad one. I, I think you got to get this off the screen. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm putting it back up. <laughs> yeah. I like Gafford. I don't think Thank Monty you, Morris is yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gafford's good. Uh, Monty Morris is fine. Exactly. But, but like how much, how much better is, Monty Morris and Pritchard, honestly. I don't even know, man. Like, so when we're talking about trades, I, I think if you're going to actually like do a relatively big trade, I think Marcus is, you're right. Like if you want to talk about changing the fabric of the team. Right. You are right. Right. I would, in a vacuum, probably value Marcus, Derek, Brogdon in that order. Um, that being said, like, Brockton was Derek, really good at times. This I know. Playoffs, man. Yeah, I, I, I know he was 0 for 6 yesterday, but everybody was 0 for 6 yesterday. So <laughs> yeah. it didn't really matter. Jalen was 0 for 7. He won up yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. So, and then the Derek thing, I just don't know where, like, if, if he's just the starter and Marcus is gone and he's a starter all year long, does the bright lights thing go away uh, a little bit? Like, 
I feel like we could we. Oh man, this is going off to a tangent, but Sorry. can we can we figure out our pick and roll offense? Why are we so bad at pick and roll? I don't know. Awful. We we cannot run it with anyone except for no. Tatum and Rob a little bit. We don't set screens. It's like so Tatum, bad. Tatum doesn't like Tatum is an awesome role man when he actually sets yeah. a screen, but he slips it every time, dude. It's so frustrating. So yeah. far out, dude. Rob like, too, a... kind of. He doesn't set hard screens either. So yeah, anyway. look, and I, look, I agree. Like not smart. You're trying to toughen up or go so like. I, I kind of agree, but and like like we don't we don't have a single like offensive thing that we go to that you feel comfortable. Have you seen Tatum post up in this series? I don't know, this is we're now now I'm just gonna. Uh, dude, start. I'm I'm right there with you, bro. I wrote. Hey, this is I, like, hey, check this out on Celtics blog. I wrote yes. something about Joe Missoula. Joe Missoula has lost the plot. I mean, like yeah. I'm with you. Like I, Joe, I was with Joe. Didn't agree with everything, but thought he was defensible until this series. This has been a disaster from Joe, <laughs> top to bottom, dude. Like post Tatum up, he's got Gabe Vincent on him. Like that's like that's a good counter to Tatum seeing three guys on the wing or on the top of the key. It's like they put him down at the post. He's send help alone, and he can make yeah, the pass. And, and it's and it's easy passes from there. Uh, yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, <laughs> hey, the Lakers are down 3-0 as well. Awesome. That kind of helps. And hey, Melo retired. Oh, yeah. 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 I, the, I, um... You know, a little around the before we get out of here, like shout out Melo. I always like loved him because I hated yeah. LeBron and I want they yeah. were the same draft class. I wonder if Melo wasn't LeBron's draft class, if he would be remembered a little more favorably just because he's like compared to LeBron, both small mm. forwards the same year. So anyway, I, I was say, always like, a fan. Yeah. I say like Lamelo, I love Lamelo. Oh my god, that was blasphemy, Carmelo. Uh, How dare his, you? <laughs> his his highlight reel, like he's a he's someone that really stands out when you look up the highlights because, as far as a scorer goes, like Tatum's the, the better player, absolutely no question. But like as far as just being like this assassin three level scorer at, and you know reliability to get to certain spots, like Melo was money, unstoppable, uh, unstoppable. And so, um, yeah, if, he if, just didn't have the the extra stuff. No, not a, he didn't play defense and he never yeah. passed. But yeah. except that one year in New York when they were good, he was passing that year. And lo and behold, they were his team was good. But uh, if you've <laughs> never watched the the YouTube video where Mello drops like 44 or something like that on all mid range jumpers. Yeah go watch it because it is awesome. Like it's hilarious. Like he just <laughs> he makes like 20 mid range jump shots. It's awesome. So anyway, shout out to mellow Jake, you got anything left? Do you want to leave us with anything before we get out of here? No, nah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right. Then that sum it up. Look, we'll be back. We'll be back again. Yep. All, all week, all off season, plenty of time for plenty of thoughts, plenty of dumb trades. Um, <laughs> yeah. Who knows, man? Spirit, next time I talk to you, we be, we could be going into a game six. Who knows? That's right. That's what I firmly believe will yeah. happen. <laughs> anyway, Jake, thanks, man. Love your work. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. If you are not subscribed, subscribe to our YouTube on any podcast, first to the floor, and we're out.